All right, so I, I would like to say a few words about the Hatfield single shot shotgun. And this particular model is a 410. It's a 410. So one thing I want to say about this gun is it's 100 bucks, 99 bucks plus tax which is a great price. Got this one at Walmart. Uh, I also understand Bud's Gun Shop's got it for a little more. If you want to support the smaller local company. I didn't know about it when I bought this gun, so I didn't have that opportunity to uh, purchase from Bud's Gun Shop. But I have purchased guns from Bud's Gun Shop. And actually, here's the gun that I did buy from Bud's Gun Shop. It's a French Moss 1936, made in 1946. It's a great gun, uh, great rifle. Shoots seven point something millimeter, I forgot already, uh, Moss. But anyways, it's an it's a extremely accurate rifle. It's dead on, bullseye. For open sights, that and the Lee Enfield's probably my two most accurate guns but it's a lot to do with the sight system which are set up the same rear sights way back here front sights way up here so you get a long sight picture but anyways that's not what this is about but just letting you know i picked that up at bud's gun shop so a couple things i've done to this gun which i've heard people um say some complaints and whatnot about the gun i have zero complaints about the gun some things I may or may not really like, uh, but for a hundred bucks, I mean, come on, you can spend a hundred bucks on a dinner for four people and it'll be gone the next day. You know, this will last for how many years? So what's a hundred dollars for a gun? You can buy a used gun. Uh, I will say this. I know that Henry makes uh, lever action or not lever action. Of course they do. But single shot shotguns, I don't know what the price is on those. But that's a brand new product also. And uh, so I have no idea what the, what they cost. But for $99, I cannot possibly beat this gun. So the first thing that I do like about it is the fact that it's so incredibly narrow. The handle... Uh, the, the foregrip is extremely narrow. The receiver is very narrow. Uh, it's a pleasure to carry when you carry it. You know, I just carry it like so through the woods. Uh, if you notice, I put me a sling on here. That's $10 for Uncle Mike's sling kit. I know it's made in China, but it's the way it is. This gun's made in Turkey. Um, used to be H&R. You could buy a single shot shotgun that's a uh, take down or whatever word you want to use well they were bought out by an American company and pretty much they shut down the facility so you didn't have a choice other than uh, the Henry's now and that's like I say that just happened I just saw the advertisement on television but I bought this actually uh, I bought it for a girl um, but she decided to get a 20 gauge pump instead but just in case I was thinking this would be good for her <clears throat> but as soon as I uh, picked it up and started to use it after she uh, declined it I really really like this gun so the first thing I did is I took a file and I filed this edge right along here all the way around I took the forearm off and then uh, I filed this all the way around, just past the front of the trigger here, because it's very sharp corners, both sides. So to make it more comfortable to hold, I took a file and filed it down. Now I did use cold bluing to blue this. Uh, it didn't hold, so it's, it's white metal now. But anyways, uh, this thing does have a uh, stiff-ish hammer which is absolutely fine with me I don't care um, I don't have a problem with that 
the safety it does have a safety which is a little button right here it's white and if you push it it's red I had to paint the red I took a q-tip and wooden q-tip and broke it in half and used the little uh, pointed part of the q-tip piece of wood dipped it in some red paint put it right in this little groove around here so it's easy for me to see and uh, also what I did was this lever here to have you break the gun down um, I went ahead and modified that just a little bit I put me a little washer underneath the bottom here because when I pulled it back it, it clicked it hit the this base here so it made a tap noise you know and it's okay because it it moves but I put that little washer in there just to keep it all level and it doesn't hit this base any longer and it doesn't pinch me so I heard a guy complaining about how it pinched him well you know what take the bolt out right here and use a good screwdriver too don't use no cheap screwdriver get you a good one uh, when you start messing around with straight screws like that it's just a regular screw uh, head so put your little washer underneath there and that problem's eliminated problem solved and now the other issue was um, it's a very light gun very easy to handle kind of like a lever action I really love it it reminds me of a friend of mine who has a 36 caliber squirrel gun a black powder gun from his grandfather and he's in his 70s so from back in the early 1900s or late 1800s he still has a squirrel gun muzzleloader and it's about this thin and it's a pleasure to hold man I love that gun I wish he'd sell it to me but he won't um, but it's just a great feel to have a gun that's so small and, and so comfortable to carry well so today I go squirrel hunting uh, well I didn't actually go squirrel hunting I, I tried to shoot one with a bow and I missed it twice uh, with a Juno point or judo point is what they're called on my bow and uh, anyway so I went ahead and grabbed my shotgun took off went out there checked just to make sure it was loaded it was not loaded it was totally empty so I came back to the house got me some shells went back out squirrels were gone of course so I thought you know what I'm gonna put a pouch on here so I got this pouch off my Mosin that got and I took a piece of string and tied it on here in different ways and now I've got a pouch so on the back side of my pouch I'm holding, I actually got a dozen 410 shot shells on this side. And then on the front one, this is my girl right there, just got home. My front pouch here, I hold, I'm holding some um, slugs. So I got some slugs right here. I'm, I'm recording. So I got me some slugs right there for the 410. And I've got uh, seven of those in here, but you could put 12 again. You can put 12 slugs in there. So the front pouch has slugs. The rear pouch has shells with uh, shot shells. And, of course, you can get those from number five, triple out bug, number six, number seven and a half, just whatever shot you need. But this, uh, this is kind of loose, but it's fine because it needs to move. So when I'm aiming... Uh, I put this I pull the hammer back and when I'm aiming on this bad boy this is not in the way it's where my wrist is so I can aim very well with the slug so I've still got to shoot the slug to see how where the impact is high low left right I haven't done that yet but it patterns real good now I understand that it's a modified choke and I believe that it is modified choke according to the pattern it's not too wide at about i'm going to say 15 to 20 yards i've shot both and it's got a real nice tight pattern doesn't seem like it's a full choke however but it could be <clears throat> but with this sling on here this makes it real nice to carry 
and this is just a partial sling. I rigged this up. It's uh, it's got two two types of material here: nylon and leather. This is off of another sling I had. This was a spare piece. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. A piece of string would work, and uh, I put it around me like so, and carry this bad boy in the woods. When I'm ready to shoot, you know, it's easy to get to. Take it off and I'm ready to shoot. But it does have a vent rib on here and some people say I don't see the point in that. But one thing it will always do is add reinforcement to your barrel. So if you was to drop it, it's got much less of a tendency to bend your barrel up or whichever direction when you drop the gun. So it adds strength along here. You can also put uh, True Glow, make some sights um, that you can mount on here, front and rear, so they're real easy to see. I painted my little front sight bead red, but I've chipped it off since then, so it's red and brass now. And then it's got a little groove back here, small groove. You could paint it white to help you line this stuff up. Um, I've never took the butt plate off, but I understand there's about a six inch uh, hole in here that you could put you a couple shells or a little Swiss Army knife or whatever you want a lighter batteries flashlight just anything you want and another fella has got a flashlight he mounted around here around his barrel and that was kind of neat but I haven't cut the barrel length at all I like it longer like this uh, it's more accurate back in the old days when they had turkey shoots man guys would get the longer the barrel, the better. So they get a better pattern when they'd go do these turkey shoots. And goose hunters would have real long barrels, but that's what the guys liked back in the day. And now everybody's cutting them off real short, and I understand that for convenience to put in your backpack. But I like it just the way it is, right here. Now, it, uh, it does have a pinch point, and that pinch point now is right here. That would smash your finger. If you drop this and you fall on your gun, you're going to crush your finger. So uh, one thing you can do about that if you'd like to is take JB Weld, wood putty, or whatever, and fill this in. You could make a wooden plug and put in there and glue it in so that your uh, <clears throat> trigger guard will hit it. It would only close about this far, which is plenty fine with me. Um, it wouldn't have a pinch point nearly as bad that way if it was to stop right there But anyway, so that's how it works. You've already seen all the videos uh, Dozens of them on how to cut this thing down and make it fold Where the barrel touches the bottom of the rear stock uh, I'm not going to go into that but this is a great gun. It's real light. It's not light, obviously, when I got all these shells in here. But right now, like I say, it, was perfect. it worked perfectly where the uh, Mosin Nagant pouch just it's like a, a, fits like a glove. And it's just really nice. It's separated, so I got my slugs again, and I got my shells in the back here. So if I want a deer hunt, here we go. Hog hunt coyote and uh, squirrel rabbit grouse whatever turkey maybe i don't know if it's good for turkey yet but i think maybe number five shot you get a good shot placement you can shoot turkeys so anyways that's my review on the hatfield i really like it it's cheap extremely inexpensive and uh, hatfield, it's a real it's, it's, it's a real pleasure and she said Hatfields are for killing <laughs> pigs and people, but that's not that's not the way it really is. Everybody <laughs> knows everybody knows the story of the Hatfields and McCoys. That's what they use. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it must be a turkey gun because it's made in Turkey. I, I don't know. I'm gonna try it maybe this next spring. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, go out and buy you one. I highly recommend them. They got my 100% recommendation. So, thanks for watching.